Hey, what's up guys? I have to use this thing to record because my camera is not working. So I thought it was just uh, the other day where I was trying to record something, but something's not up. Hopefully this gets fixed because if this doesn't get fixed, then I'm probably not going to make videos for a while until I get a new camera or fix that. Anyways, so let's see where to begin. Things have been going my way really, 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 really good. Um, before I tell you some of the things that's been happening, I'll just tell you tell you guys what like what what are the different things I'm doing currently to get some more traction. All right, so as you guys know, normally when I try to sell people, right, uh, let's say for a paper call, I'm calling them down home advisor, right? My pitch is basically the same. Oh, by the way, guys, I'll just keep this in the background because I don't know what else to show you guys. Um, and then and then I'll just give my take on Conor McGregor versus Mayweather fight. Um, anyways, what was I going to say? All right, so normally uh, the, my pitch is pretty much the same, right, for all paper call people because I know that what I'm selling and it shouldn't be too hard to get through to them, right, to the owner. If they're looking for more leads, I have this bunch, this to offer. It's exclusive at this price, right? If a receptionist picks up, I hang up the phone because I don't want to go through all hoops and loops to sell this thing because I know I can get a contractor that's going to pick up the phone. Plus. Also, the fact that um, if you're doing paper call, you kind of want the contractor paper to pick up the phone because receptionists usually suck. All right, so that's that. Now, while selling SEO, my approach was pretty much the same. But recently, as I realized that it's not a good idea to make it like that because um, as I showed you guys in one of the videos um, that I made recently with my business partner, his, his approach is completely different. He doesn't just go down the list. He targets maybe three to four people he's going to call for the day and he only calls them, right? So his prospecting starts not from home advisor, but it actually starts from the ground. Like if he sees a truck that has advertising, if he sees a flyer, if he gets in a yellow book, if he sees in a restaurant where they put the things, he takes pictures all the time and gets them up. And then when he starts calling, he has this like big zip log of like flyers and business cards and all this stuff. And then he uses them to go out and find more information about these companies, right? He founds the owner who works there, who's the receptionist, if there's another partner, what are their current marketing. He find, he does a lot more homework. So it goes from, oh, I'm going to go get a roofer from Westchester County to, I know that there's Sam, Billy, and Bob who are a good fit for me to work with. So let me go get them. You get it? It's so much more targeted, right? And it works really well. He calls like five or six people and he literally gets like four, over 50% easily. Three or four of them um, he moves forward with. Either they give them, you know, a time to call back to discuss further. A lot of times it's just, you know, what he wants is an appointment. But it, the, the, the ratio that people move forward with him is high, so high that I never thought it was possible, to be honest. Because I used to sell life insurance and my sales experience comes from that and I, 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 I embodied that, you know, like I'm going to call 100 people and only five of them are going to actually be interested to do anything forward, right? But seeing him, it made me want to change my script a little bit and I did and it's working much better. So for you guys, what you can do is exactly what I do, right? I don't go take pictures of flyers and all that stuff yet, but what I do is I look through first Home Advisor to see reviews, okay? First I see reviews for um, how many reviews they have. If they have over 20, 30 reviews, they are really good, right? Most companies don't have a proper system to get the most reviews they can get. So if they have over 20, 30 reviews, those are legit reviews and they're doing much better than the reviews are reflecting, right? So boom, one, they have good reviews. Number two, I go and look at what they currently have going. If it's their website, is it nice or is it shitty? Then I look at their Sem SEMrush da data, right? Um, do they have brand searches? So brand searches are basically, if you guys don't know, um, if it's in Westchester and people are typing in roofing contractors Westchester, brand search would be Bob's Roofing Westchester or Bob's Roofing period, right? I mean, Bob's Roofing. Basically, they are looking for not just a service around them, but they're looking for the guy who does that service, right? They're looking for that company, indicating that that company is good at what they do. They, are, they have fans, they have a following, right? This is a critical step. I'm, beginning to understand and see that because 
it makes your job at least five times easier if it if it's a company that people already love their work, right? You want it's almost like you want to take people who are who are good at what they do, but they just don't know how to get that kind of exposure and market themselves, and take them on board and you know get that leverage four or five times that you can give them compared to getting those guys who are you know not really have a name for themselves. They're just giving you this five hundred thousand dollars to give them all the leads, and they're gonna be like you know pulling on your teeth for every movement that they need. Um, it's gonna be a lot more harder, right? Now I understand in the beginning it's you know it's quite hard. So I'm not going to act here, you know, especially when I'm, I'm still just ripping away from the beginning stage, I consider myself. But once you get one or two clients, it'll be a huge um, idea. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it's very important to take some time and understand that you want to be selective about the contractors you even try to target, because the worst thing you really want is getting yourself, you know, going so hard, getting a client finally, and it happens to be a client that you can't even help. Like, if it's a guy who treats their customers like shit, they don't know how to treat their people, their employees hate them, all that kind of stuff which can happen and you try to make them come on the first page, trust me, even when they are on the first page, they're not going to get, their business is not going to be up there for long because people are going to be bouncing off, they're going to ignore their name because they might have a bad reputation and it's just not going to work out, right? You want to be able to be in a position where you're helping people who are masters of their domain and you are masters of your domain and you bond together and make the whole thing work out, right? That makes sense. So that's one of the main things that I'm really learning now and um, and implementing finally. You know, it's pretty much common sense. We all we always know this. Oh, you want to work with good roofers, but you don't really take the time to actually target them, right? So do that from now, right? Target those roofers, um, those contractors, those those you know people you're targeting who are really good at what they do. All right, so. That's it, pretty much for business. And um, just for an update, believe it or not, I got five thousand dollars as a cash payment, right? And they fit this criteria I, ju I just told you about very, very well. Now, mind you, this does this is not going to happen every day. Obviously, this is somebody who we, we, I had tried to sell and software to. I mean, an app to um, back a couple months ago, more than a couple months, five six months ago. My friend was building apps. He's not even in this country. He's in Switzerland, and I was trying to sell it for him came across this florist who didn't, who was interested in the app, didn't get it, but I kept in contact. Uh, the sale fell through the app, but I kept in contact after I came back until I showed them what I can do for them. Again, they're very, very good at what they do. They're recommended by one of the biggest venues in all of New York, and but they don't have any online presence. They just had a flimsy little website. So when I showed them what they can expect from the search volume, you know, just data from Google, as I showed you guys in one of the videos, they bought, they bought, they just went, boom, $5,000 on the table right there. I was going to try to ask for $1,000 a month, which would be 12000 for a year. But, you know, they said, we can give you $5,000 right now for the whole year. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a take it or leave it. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so that was fucking amazing. That's my, you know, my biggest payment so far um, in a single day ever, pretty much, right? So, yeah, it's, I'm pretty hyped from that. I've been, you know, high from it and calling more and just working at a better pace since that happened. And um, yeah, that's the entire update. Now, to end it, talking about this shit, I could probably make a whole video on this thing, but I didn't even know that there's so so much controversy about this thing, Conor McGregor and Mayweather, right? I didn't know people are actually debating so hard that Conor is gonna win, right? So I just wanted to let you, just put it on video, my take on it, like with one little concept to end this video. All right. Anybody watching my channel, like, what the fuck? We just went through like three different topics in the same, what the hell? <laughs> just listen up. Everybody's going to watch this fight. Unless you're like living under the rock, you're fucking paying pay-per-view for this fight. Okay. So this is my take guys. If you're on the fence on thinking who's really going to win this, just think about it a little logically, right? In a fight, in a normal fight, street fight, like UFC, there's from anywhere from 40, you know, 30 to 50 punches thrown in a fight, okay? And anything can happen, it's true. A very brawler type novice fighter, not novice, but you know, he's okay experience, he's a brawler, he's a lot of power, he's an you know, explosive fighter, um, can knock out somebody who's a lot more technical, a lot more precise, and he's a better martial artist. He can get knocked out by a brawler because it's a fight. Anything can happen. You're throwing fists at each other and something lands just when he couldn't dodge it. 
You can't train to not get knocked out. You will get knocked out, right? That's a fight. Now, but in boxing, in a single fight, anything anywhere from 300 to 400 punches are thrown on average, or 200 to 400. I don't know exactly the numbers, but I know it's a lot, lot more than fighting in UFC, right? So given those stats, right, Mayweather in his track, he, ha he rarely gets hit in a fight where there's 300 to 400 punches thrown. And we're talking about world-class fighters who do this their entire life. Okay, and then they have a plan and they go into it and they always get surprised at how freaking good his defense is. I'm not a Mayweather fan. In fact, I kind of hate Mayweather. I come from a background, you can say, where I like Mike Tyson, where I like fighters who are kind of like brawlers, who have the whole attitude of, even if I do get hit, my one's going to hit you and it's going to knock you the fuck out. Where, coming from that kind of stance, I just don't like Mayweather's style because it's so boring. He's... He's a very defensive fighter. He counters. Fighting somebody like Connor, who technically is a master counterpuncher as well, right? He's not a brawler. He's a good martial artist who counters very, very well. He's very precise. His timing is very good. But you're going into, stepping into the realm of a guy who's been doing it for freaking like three decades, right? against that style of fighting where he dominates him. You are a multi-dimensional fighter and boxing is one of your 10 tools. He only does boxing. For us to think that Mayweather even has a, like any, he doesn't have any chance to win this. The winner in this fight is Dana White. <laughs> it's the matchmakers, right? The press is insane. They're going to kill it. And um, it's already done. They already won. It's over already. The fight is just an extension of this entire thing. All right, guys? So that's my take on it. There's no way Conor wins. If he wins, I will not ever watch any boxing match ever again. And I don't know shit about fighting, right? <laughs> There's no way. All right? So that's my take on that. And let's see what happens. He's This, this guy's going to get embarrassed. Overall, guys, I'll leave it at that. Hopefully my camera gets fixed so I can get back to making some videos. And um, see you guys next time. Peace.